All right. <clears throat> so, good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to our KIT four five eight chemical processing class. It is Thursday. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest, and uh, it's quite unfortunate that we have morning class on Thursday, especially. Okay. Right. So once again, I would like to remind you guys if suddenly I'm disconnected because currently I'm accessing internet or giving lectures from home. Okay, so you just uh, send a text or probably just miss call to my phone and I will be aware. Okay, so don't worry, the lecture will be recorded. So later on, I will uh, post it. <clears throat> On YouTube, so you guys can watch it if you have missed it somewhere. Okay, so for today, basically, we are going to uh, start with a new chapter. It is actually on industrial gases. So this chapter um, is considered as one of the important chapters. Why? Because it actually tells how you can produce or um, how you can manufacture gas um, for industrial purposes. For example, if you want to produce uh, ammonia, so you know ammonia is produced by Haber process, okay? the combination of hydrogen gas with nitrogen gas with the presence of catalyst that eventually we produce ammonia, NH2, sorry, NH3, okay? So things that we are going to address in this chapter is of course, air as a raw materials, the components uh, of separation, how you can uh, purify, how you can separate gas, because sometimes the source of gas is actually coming from atmospheric gas, okay? For your information, atmospheric gas um, contains a combination of uh, various types of gas. Okay, and in order to have a pure uh, and absolute gas, you need separation. Okay. The production of carbon dioxide from industries, not only carbon dioxide, uh, in this chapter, we are also going to address um, oxygen, hydrogen, okay, and um, from this uh, three different gas, you will go into study what will be the suitable process um, to produce it. <clears throat> and finally, the production of industrial gases, and not only, as I said, not only carbon dioxide, but also uh, other types of useful gas. All right, so is it okay to everyone? I'm still like available. Okay. So let me quickly share the screen. So the in uh, introduction of industrial gas. So industrial gases are gases materials um, that are manufactured for use in industries. So the industry producing these gases is known as industrial gases industry, which is seen as also encompassing the supply of equipments and technology to produce and use the gases. Industrial gases are used in a wide range of industries such as oil and gas, petrochemicals and chemicals, power, mining, steel making and metals, medicine, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, food, water, and etc. As you can see over here, um, I'm sharing with you the industrial gases in glass industry. So in the glass industry, actually they use gas as part of the um, component for the process. You'll see that oxygen being the highest because 
in order to burn the get uh, the glass okay, you need uh, oxygen to do the combustion okay, nitrogen followed by nitrogen and etc apart from that <clears throat> you can also see the use of or uh, yeah the use of um, industrial gas okay, ranging from uh, electric power industrial commercial residential oil and gas and pipeline fuels so the example of industrial gases are as follows nitrogen argon carbon dioxide hydrogen oxygen the classification of industrial gases what makes um, industrial gases uh, is different from um, any types of gas that you see around you is that in industry they use a color classification to differentiate gas okay as you can see over here i show you a picture okay uh, a gas cylinder um, with a different components of gas like oxygen normally the gas cylinder will be black in color acetylene okay maroon eh, carbon dioxide yellow and so forth even in industry you will notice that for gas they will actually color the pipe eh? The pipeline just to indicate that what types of gas you will see that yellow and red so yellow and red you know okay uh, this um, you have uh, oxygen you can also have a nitrogen eh? normally nitrogen uh, yellow in color then uh, red colors and also this is actually important if let's say that um, there's a leakage or uh, there's a process that uh, need the install of gas then they know that okay we need to install red line we need to install yellow line in the uh, plant so cylinder shell can also be colored to better identify the content permitted into the specific types of cylinder okay so so far is okay is it okay to everyone okay right we move on to air as a raw materials <clears throat> as i said air atmospheric air is very much special because it has uh, different types of gases okay what you inhale um, in the environment actually having different uh, percentage of uh, gas in fact we as a human we consume oxygen okay for respiration okay Oxygen will be consumed and then oxygen will be transported uh, or uh, first absorbed in the lung and then goes into the uh, bloodstream. It will be later on supplied to the cell for the needs. Eh? And then uh, during the respiration process, we produce carbon dioxide. I think um, it's kind of interesting to see that. Uh, doctor, sorry, doctor. Yeah. Uh, saya juga yang nampak slide doktor tak gerak. Tak gerak? Haa. Uh -uh. hmm, sekarang dekat mana? Sekarang slide doktor tengah tunjuk dekat second slide. Second slide? Haa. Uh -uh. Gerak tak? Tak. Okay, so it's good. I mean, just tell me if uh, suddenly you have some problems or what. So now, okay. Is it okay? Okay, doctor. Okay. Yeah, now, gitu. Ah, ah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, so what you guys missed just now is basically on. Um, classification of industrial gas and I just moved to this one uh, as a raw materials as I mentioned <clears throat> the atmospheric air actually have a combination of different gases and for your I mean surprise actually atmospheric air contains around 78 percent of nitrogen gas and what we inhale actually we just want to consume oxygen gas so you have actually a majority of nitrogen gas so 
do you think that nitrogen gas is hazardous to human? Do you think that it is dangerous if we inhale nitrogen? Any suggestion? Anyone? Huh? Lena, what do you think? Is it dangerous to inhale nitrogen gas? Uh, <laughs> Why? Why do you think so? Any idea? No idea? No idea, doctor. Basically, nitrogen gas is considered as a neutral gas. Eh? So it's inert. Eh? It didn't actually involve in uh, any sort of um, reaction. So if let's say that we inhale uh, a combination of nitrogen gas with oxygen, it is normal and uh, we don't suffer any complication after that. So God have created this, uh, I mean, nitrogen gas is very much special. The reason why uh, nitrogen uh, is majorly found in atmospheric air is because, um, as I said, it is neutral. If, like, for example, <clears throat> Uh, you know that uh, carbon dioxide is slightly acidic. Okay, if you have um, some other gas which probably will be harmful to you, you need some buffer or you need some gas that can neutralize it. So uh, nitrogen uh, will play the role. Okay, so of course, um, apart from nitrogen and oxygen, we do also have argon, eh, carbon dioxide, okay, N uh, neon. Uh, hydrogen, helium, krypton, and xenon. Another question that I would like to ask you, okay, if you notice over here, carbon dioxide is very much low, even lower than 1%, 0 0.03. But why people are saying that, oh, CO2 emission and whatsoever, uh, ozone uh, layer will be thinner because of carbon dioxide and blah, blah, blah. So do you think that this uh, fact is correct, actually? Yeah, in. I think uh, I saw name. Yeah, in. Are you Ram? One wicket. One wicket. Uh, yes, Papa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you think that? Uh, this data is actually correct because people are, keep saying that uh, carbon dioxide is, I mean, uh, the, the production of carbon dioxide is uh, huge and whatsoever. So do you think that this data is correct? Uh, I think it's, I think it's uh, not correct. <laughs> not correct? <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I'm not I sure. sure. <laughs> okay. When we look at the overall, I mean, uh, the area of uh, the Earth, then this is actually correct. The data is actually correct, 0 0.03, because we still have uh, a huge number of ocean. I mean, uh, most of our um, Earth is actually occupied by sea. And, and then uh, the rest, actually, we still have like forests and whatsoever. But if you look at the localized site, like uh, probably Penang, eh? if we just look at the Penang area only, Penang Island especially, okay, then the composition of gas will be different. So uh, what you see over here is not like a localized um, area size. It's more of like the overall area size. So still carbon dioxide is lower, but um, very much that the number is so i believe that this is a very old uh, data probably now it can be like mm, more than 0 0.03 probably okay because we see there's a lot of indices opening and also able. so the composition of air is actually affected by moisture content okay um, this uh, actually contributed from water vapor depending on locality and geography so as i said um depending on the area that 
uh, you are looking at, then uh, the components and everything will be different as well. Geological factors uh, lines to area activities. <clears throat> this is important because uh, in the region that has volcanic activity, then you will see that there's a lot of sulfur emission okay, from uh, eruption or from uh, the vapors and everything. And another uh, thing will be um, on human activity, industrial or motor vehicle gases effluent. So if you compare like uh, New York City with um, like for example Kandahar in Afghanistan, so you know that in New York City you have lots of cars and there's a lot of uh, CO2 produced as compared to uh, countries that didn't have much uh, automobiles. So the first gas that we are going to study is carbon dioxide. Okay. Uses of carbon dioxide is for carbonated beverages. Carbonated beverages normally um, uses carbon dioxide to produce carbonated um, drinks. Right? Then you will have this fizzy um, sensation when you drink uh, carbonated beverages. Refrigerating and freezing. For example, in the food industries or ice cream Doctor. industries. Yep. The slide is not moving again. No, slide is not still not moving. My goodness. How about this time? Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. I think maybe it has some problem when I share this the bigger screen, eh? but never mind. All right. So as I said, for carbon dioxide, it is also important in refrigerating and freezing industries. Why? Because carbon dioxide can be used to produce dry ice. Okay. So if someone who didn't know what does it mean by dry ice, dry ice is actually carbon dioxide that you compress into a container, then it will be liquefied and later solidified to form dry ice. So the temperature of dry ice can be like um, below zero. It's almost uh, negative, but it is not um, as cold as liquid nitrogen. Carbon dioxide is also used for fire extinguisher. Reason why is because when you apply carbon dioxide or ABC fire extinguisher, for example, or CO2 fire extinguisher, then there's no more supply of oxygen to the area. I mean, especially the burning area, then it will stop or it will uh, cut the, the burning. pH control of a wastewater also use CO2. Reason why is because CO2 is slightly acidic, then you can control the pH using gas only without adding on probably mineral acids okay, or whatsoever. And finally, in the production of urea. Okay, so you'll see uh, later on. So for the production of CO2, it can be produced as a byproduct from the synthesis in ammonia production. So you will see from here the schematic diagram showing you how you can produce ammonia from methane. Actually, um, methane and water, when you combine it with air, okay, what will happen is basically it will produce nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, and CO2. And from here, this uh, where the process um, of Haber process goes on, then you will have a byproduct of CO2. <clears throat> it is also a byproduct of substitute uh, natural gases. You can also produce CO2 from fermentation. This is always the process okay? when you have like uh, a sugar, raw materials, okay, and then you uh, use a bacteria or microorganism. To do fermentation, then later on it will produce alcohol plus with CO2 and water. Okay, and finally, from the natural well, um, natural well also contains 
uh, some amount of CO2, right? So this is actually the first uh, process to produce CO2. And uh, I would consider this one is a bit important because um, normally we produce uh, CO2 majorly from fermentation process, right? <clears throat> Because as you can see over here, uh, the figure actually showing you the flow diagrams uh, in the fermentation process. So you have uh, sugar cane or any sort of um, biomass as a raw materials, as a sugar um, source. You put in the tank that actually contains yeast. So yeast uh, will be used as an active ingredient to uh, sacrificial, uh, how do we say, sacrificial fermentation process, SSF. Eh? And then uh, what happens is it goes into the fermenter because uh, you need to recite the mixture for a certain time. Okay? In um, beer industries, normally the longer you keep the materials or the mixture, the better the quality of the beer or the wine that you will produce, okay? So over here, you will see that there's a three fermenter or three reactor that is used, okay, uh, during the process. And normally the final uh, reactor will produce slightly high percent of uh, alcohol as compared to the first two, okay? So another source of CO2 is actually from fermentation industries. If yeast is used, alcohol and CO2 are produced. The yield of CO2 will vary with the mode of fermentation. Recovery and purification of CO2 from fermentation requires no cooling um, because the temperature is slightly around 40 to uh, 45 degrees C. So there's no special cooling uh, that is necessary and CO2 content starts above 99.5%. Um, okay. So this is actually the biochemistry uh, reaction for fermentation process. Uh, this is also important okay, for you guys to, uh, to know at least. Okay. So glucose is actually the source. The raw material for fermentation process is actually coming from glucose. And then what happened is glycolysis process. Glycolysis will produce uh, pyruvate. So, um, from pyruvate, the two moles of pyruvate uh, will undergo acetylation process. And finally, it will produce uh, ethanol okay? and CO2 as a byproduct. I believe. Some of you taken uh, biochemistry. Did anyone take biochemistry in this course? Anyone? I don't. I think maybe pure student uh, take uh, have to take biology. I do remember during my undergraduate, I took um, biochemistry before. So <clears throat> the process of uh, producing this is actually part of uh, the process of so glycolysis process. Produce pyruvate is also known as a Krebs cycle. So, for your information, and <clears throat> CO two process uh, fermentation purification process. So, after you have produced CO two from fermentation process, it is important to purify the gas that you produce. So, how to purify the process? Okay, how to purify the gas is actually to install. Uh, this process. So this is also one of the important process for CO2 purification from fermentation process. Okay. So as you can see over here, you have like around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, scrubbers eh? or seven uh, columns that is used for purification. Starting from the first one, you have like around 99.8% of CO2 from fermenters. It goes into the first scrubber. So the first scrubber is actually uh, alcohol scrubber. So the function of alcohol scrubber is actually to um, 
remove most of the uh, alcohol, I mean, some of the alcohols that may contain in your CO2. Okay. And later on, it will go into the two water scrubber. Okay. So the water scrubber um, actually remove the water soluble impurities. Okay. So um, the water is actually coming from uh, fermentation process because you have a carry over of water also as a side product or a byproduct. And later after that, it will go into the gasometer because water uh, can be hydrolyzed to produce um, hydrogen and oxygen. But um, I think apart from that, uh, uh, the, the CO2, after it goes into the two water scrubbers, it will go into the uh, bichromate or the potassium dichromate uh, scrubbers. So the function of bichromate or dichromate scrubbers okay, is actually to oxidize the alcohol and aldehyde that contains in the uh, CO2. Okay, Next, it will go into the cooler and goes into the sulfuric acid scrubber. So sulfuric acid scrubber actually function as dehydrating agent. Okay, It, it will dehydrate. Okay. The gas that uh, passing through it and later it goes into the sodium carbonate scrubber the sodium carbonate scrubber will remove the entrained uh, acid in gas and when acid is neutralized then co2 will be released and finally it goes into the oil scrubber because the oil scrubber uh, contains glycerin and it will absorb the oxidized uh, products and send the odorless gas to compressor. Then finally, you will have a pure uh, CO2 gas for uh, consumption. Okay, so as I said, um, the first process for the production of CO2 is coming from fermentation process. So you know that CO2 produced uh, in a beer or beverages industries as a side product. So this is actually the process. Make sure you know what will be the flow diagram. Okay? And this is actually the biochemistry reaction behind it. And this is actually the purification process. So the purification process actually install around uh, six to seven scrubbers. Okay, So you have like the first scrubber, alcohol scrubber, water scrubber, bichromate scrubber, uh, sulfate acid scrubber, uh, sodium carbonate scrubber, and finally oil scrubber. Okay, so remember this. Next, actually, we will go through uh, hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas is considered as uh, one of the renewable energy because um, these days hydrogen is used in vehicle, like for example, motorbike, uh, cars, and whatsoever. I do remember in uh, Taiwan, they are now using hydrogen okay, as uh, a source of fuel. Because some countries actually they don't have fossil fuel. Then what they do is they actually find an alternative so that they can um, utilize whatsoever the resources that they have and use it for their vehicle. So in Taiwan, actually, they install uh, hydrogen fuel into their motorbikes and cars. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see that <clears throat> when your motorbike eh, in Taiwan has run out of uh, hydrogen fuel, then you just go to any uh, convenience uh, store like 7-Eleven or what, you just to buy a cartridge of um, hydrogen gas, then you just uh, put it or plug in to your motorbike, then it will function like, like that. Okay. So the important gases, um, raw material for chemicals and petroleum industries. So hydrogen is mostly used for hydrogenation process. Okay. It is also used uh, in power plants. Okay. Apart from that, uh, for um, natural gas and whatsoever. It can be sold as gas or liquid. Okay, so normally hydrogen, uh, as you know, it exists in the gas 
uh, state, but you can actually uh, have a liquid uh, hydrogen by doing liquef uh, liquefaction. Okay, later on, uh, towards the end of this course, you will learn about how to produce how to do liquefaction. Eh? Okay, and then uh, it is also used in making ammonia, methanol, and etc. So it's also envisioned as um, fuel for future. So the production of hydrogen gas can be various. Okay. It can be coming from um, electrolysis. It can also come in from cracking process, steam reformation, and etc. But I guess um, we are going to go one by one on each um, process. But of course, as I said, um, you have learned uh, one of the methods, which is electrolysis during your high school. So you know that hydrogen gas can be produced from the electrolysis of water. Okay. So it is derived from carbaceous uh, material, primarily hydrocarbons and or, or water. Carbonaceous materials or water is decomposed by application of energy, which may be electrical, chemical, or thermal. And sometimes other methods also exist. So the first method is actually from electrolytic method. Okay. So when you do electrolysis of water or brine, for example, uh, it will actually produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So of course, over here, if you look, Okay, you have uh, anode and cathode. So hydrogen gas is actually produced at cathode. Eh? Okay. The red one over here. Okay. It has uh, two times volume as much as oxygen. Uh, so when you do uh, this kind of uh, experiment, so you know that uh, if you put um, wooden splinter, oxygen gas, it will glow. And then if you put um, wooden splinter, hydrogen it will produce pop sound something like that okay so the ratio between oxygen to hydrogen is one to two okay hydrogen is two times more in volume as compared to oxygen right so apart from that from the fuel cell process you can also produce um, hydrogen gas okay so this is example of fuel cell for water then you have oxygen and uh, hydrogen produced at the same time okay so is it clear to everyone i don't know whether my voice is still can be heard okay okay right and then from electrolytic methods it actually produced a very high purity of um, hydrogen gas that you will uh, produce okay this because it actually <clears throat> uh, use a high purity of water so when you have a high purity of water then uh, the purity of uh, your hydrogen gas will be high as well so passing direct current through an aqueous solution of alkali and uh, decomposing the water it will actually produce hydrogen gas with oxygen so this is actually the uh, half equation you have two moles of water okay passing through uh, the DC current then what happened is electrolysis and producing two moles of hydrogen plus with one moles of oxygen okay if you notice over there the Delta H value is around positive um, 569 kilojoules so you know that this process is endothermic and it is not spontaneous okay so non-spontaneous process must be assisted by external force which in this case with the use of battery electrolysis cell electrolyzes 15 percent of sodium hydroxide solution and uses iron cathode and nickel plated iron anode and has an asbestos di diaper okay, as a separator the condition normally operates at around 60 to 70 degrees C and it produces around 59 liters of hydrogen, 28 liters of oxygen per megajoule. So pure hydrogen gas is suitable for hydrogenating edible oil. So as I said, 
uh, most of the application of hydrogen gas is basically on hydrogenation process. So it is important to use a very pure hydrogen gas and in order to obtain highly pure hydrogen gas, you can produce it from electrolytic methods. Another example of hydrogen gas uh, production, you can get it from microbial uh, electrolytic cell, okay, using a fuel cell. And then another method also from steam gasification. Okay, so gasification is basically a method where uh, biomass is used uh, as a raw materials, and then after that you will burn it. Okay, uh, it will be put under um, oxygen, it will be combust. Then uh, the gas that will be produced will later treated with uh, steam and it will convert it into hydrogen gas. <clears throat> right. So another types of method to produce uh, hydrogen gas is by treating hydrocarbon with steam. So this will be the second process that uh, you will learn on the production of hydrogen gas, which is called steam hydrocarbon reforming process. Okay. So this um, process is considered one of the, um, I think, popular process that is used in industry because electrolysis is not always favored by companies because you will use energy, okay, uh, electricity and whatsoever. Meanwhile, for steam hydrocarbon, uh, what you need is probably steam and hydrocarbon as part of the uh, raw materials. And the uh, operating condition can be controlled as well. Right. <clears throat> Catalytically, uh, reacting a mixture of steam and hydrocarbon at elevated temperature will produce hydrogen gas. Okay. Hydrogen gas uh, will form as a mixture of hydrogen and oxides of carbon. So oxide of carbon meaning that uh, it will be carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So if you can see over here, okay, this is actually the example. You have hydrocarbon, okay, empirical formula reacted with water or steam. Then uh, what you will get at first will be carbon monoxide okay, plus with hydrogen gas. So this carbon monoxide can be later on uh, reacted with steam to produce carbon dioxide plus with hydrogen gas again. Okay, So uh, two times or twice step actually can produce two times hydrogen gas. And remember for steam hydrocarbon reforming process, only light hydrocarbon will be used in the process. So you cannot use... Um, heavier uh, hydrocarbon, okay? Light hydrocarbon normally think ranging from carbon one until carbon three or carbon four only, okay? So not up to carbon five, carbon six or whatsoever, okay? So the example methane, I mean like methane, you know, the formula is CH4. Methane can be used as the raw material <clears throat> and uh, can be later on reacted with steam to produce hydrogen right so if you notice over here this actually a flow diagram of steam hydrocarbon reforming process so this um, flow diagram is also important for you guys to remember you will see over here you have a feed where uh, the light hydrocarbon will be pumped in okay you will see there's a heat exchanger over here okay okay the heat exchanger arrows is actually pointing uh, upside. So this is actually uh, a cooler. So you'll see that the gas or the hydrocarbon will be cooled first and then it will go into a column. So once it goes into the column, the first process is actually desulfurizer. So desulfurizer is actually to remove some trace of um, hydrogen sulfide, okay, H2S, okay, which is actually considered slightly corrosive. And after you have removed some of the sulfur containing compounds, it will go into the process steam, okay? The steaming process. So this is actually the first process. 
So the first process is known as <coughs> reforming process. This is where hydrocarbons react with steam to produce carbon monoxide with hydrogen. This process is considered highly endothermic and need to be done at a higher temperature and a lower pressure. Excess steam is used. The reason why excess steam is used is because to ensure that the conversion of hydrocarbon to uh, carbon monoxide plus with hydrogen will be uh, high as well. Okay, so you can actually consider this as a uh, Le Chatelier uh, principle where when you have excess uh, reactor, then the overall operation will go into the right hand side or going towards the production of a product. Okay. So after the reforming process has been done, okay, then it goes into the second stage. Okay, you'll see over here HT, high temperature shift and then low temperature shift. The second process is known as water gas shift reaction. So right after you have produced carbon monoxide plus with um, hydrogen gas, this carbon monoxide can be later on <coughs> uh, react with steam to produce carbon dioxide plus with hydrogen gas. In this process, it will use a mild endothermic uh, condition with a low temperature. Okay, That is why you will see over here, uh, when it goes into the um, shifting process, okay, low temperature, high from high temperature into a low temperature. Okay, all the while you will see like cooler, cooler, cooler. Right? So this is actually cooler, the exchange of cooler. Okay. So excess steam used to force reaction to completion and the catalyst will be used in this uh, stage as well. So the types of catalyst will be used is actually ferric oxide. Right. For steam reforming process, both reaction occurs in steam reforming furnace at the temperature of 760 to 980 degrees C. The composition of product streams depends upon process condition, including temperature, pressure, and excess steam, which determine the equilibrium and velocity through the catalyst bed. Okay. So production is approximately around 75% of hydrogen, 8% of carbon monoxide, and 15% of carbon dioxide. So the rem remainder is actually nitrogen and unreacted methane. Producing additional hydrogen, <clears throat> okay, so this actually in the case of uh, you have um, higher percentage of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So you can actually install another plant of water gas shift conversion. So this is actually um, very much uh, needed in case of if you want to increase the percentage of uh, yield for hydrogen gas production. <clears throat> so water gas shift conversion will be uh, considered. The additional steam is used and the temperature is reduced from um, 315 to 370. So of course, the first step, I mean, after steam eh, uh, reforming, so this is actually steam reforming, then you have shifting process. Reforming process Temperature condition is around 700 something to 900 something. Meanwhile, for um, shifting process, the temperature is around 300 something. Okay, so it has been very much reduced. And then the single stage converts 80 to 90 percent of residual CO2 to, uh, sorry, CO to CO2 and H2. The reaction is considered exothermic the temperature uh, reaction will rises. It will enhance the reaction rate, but adverse effect on equilibrium. <clears throat> right. So, the shift conversion, actually, when the concentration of CO exists in feed, okay, the shift conversion is conducted in two or more stages. As I mentioned earlier, if the amount or the percentage of CO is higher. Okay, then for shifting process, you can actually conduct two to 
uh, three stages. Eh. So this just to ensure that you convert the I mean the the remaining uh, CO into CO two plus with hydrogen. The interstage cooling to prevent excess temperature rise. And the first stage at the high temperature is actually to obtain high reaction rate. And the second stage at the lower temperature is to obtain good combustion. So this where you can see uh, the high temperature and also the low temperature column over there. So the rest is actually to separate um, carbon dioxide eh, because you see there's an adsorber over here. You know, after the uh, shifting process, you will have CO2 plus with hydrogen gas. So the adsorber will actually adsorb or remove out um, CO2 and then will separate hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas will go into the another uh, scrubber okay, for stripping. And then after that, finally, it goes to the uh, alternator and compression to produce hydrogen gas. Meanwhile, for CO2, okay, CO2 can be uh, recycled, I mean, can be used for uh, the methanator process as well. All right. So is there any question so far? <clears throat> any question so far on uh, CO2 and hydrogen gas? I think for CO2, you've learned about uh, fermentation process and purification and then for hydrogen gas we have learned uh, from electrolysis and also the first step the steam hydrocarbon reforming process we still have another process which is known as partial oxidation process but uh, before that let me ask whether you guys have uh, any question so far anything that you want to ask Anything? Uh, doctor. Yeah. Is the carbon dioxide produced from the synthesis of the hydrogen pure? Sorry again. Is the carbon just now for the steam hydrocarbon reforming? You produce the carbon dioxide as well, right? Yes. Yes. Is the carbon dioxide is pure? Okay, the purity of a carbon dioxide um, is actually high because you can see over here, okay, it uses a, a double, okay, um, to remove out the carbon dioxide gas. But if you ask me, can we actually consider steam hydrocarbon as one of the process to produce CO2 gas? What do you think? Can we consider that? Because in this process, actually, it produces hydrogen gas and also CO2. So uh, what we are talking just now is how to produce hydrogen gas from steam hydrocarbon process. But before that, I think when we go to uh, carbon dioxide uh, gas, we only discuss about uh, fermentation and uh, process that produce uh, CO2. So let me tell you. Um, steam hydrocarbon uh, reforming process can also be considered as one of the methods to produce CO2 gas, but it is not favored. Why? Because the yield of CO2 produced is low. Okay? It's not as much as uh, even 50% or what, only a 15% per I think, process. Then um, maybe it is not really economical as compared to fermentation process. But if you ask in terms of purity, of course, the purity is still high because uh, in this case, only <clears throat> hydrogen gas and CO2 are produced. If you compare the CO2 produced from the fermentation process, it is actually having um, I think impurities from alcohol, from water and whatsoever. Then that is why it needs to be Purified. I mean, uh, using this, uh, blah, 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 where is it? Yes, using this uh, process. But the main concern is actually on the yield. So the yield is not really great for this process. So it's only great, uh, giving a great yield for hydrogen. Then that is why I think people are using this process to produce hydrogen gas apart from uh, CO2. But of course, in industry, 
they always recycle whatever they produce. So the CO2 uh, that they produce actually would be recycled for their other purpose, okay, but not for uh, products. Okay. All right. So I believe uh, probably that's it for today's lecture. We we'll call for the day. We will actually continue with partial oxidation process. <clears throat> As I can say just now for um, steam hydrocarbon reforming process, this process actually use light hydrocarbon to produce hydrogen gas. Meanwhile, for partial oxidation process, later on you will see that it will use slightly bigger hydrocarbon process. Uh, sorry, uh, slightly bigger hydrocarbon raw materials. So uh, you can actually choose if you have raw materials that having slightly high molecular weight, okay, then you can use partial oxidation process. If you have your raw materials, hydrocarbon is actually uh, low chain, then you can use uh, steam hydrocarbon uh, reforming process. Okay, but never mind, I think for POX, we will um, study this in detail next week. And uh, I'm just asking, okay, probably before we adjourn the class, is it okay uh, that next week uh, we are going to have our lecture on, it's just only for next week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. I'm not sure, but um, I'm just asking because actually on Wednesday and Thursday, I have uh, to, I have to conduct a workshop uh, outside in Sirim, then I will not be around. So uh, maybe I have to find some time to replace the class. But I'm just asking, maybe we can discuss this later in WhatsApp. Okay, All right. So any other question before I adjourn the class? Yes, no? <clears throat> right, so... Um, if there's no question, uh, I believe that I have uploaded the event in your e-learning on the homework that I've told you yesterday. So you can start to submit your homework if you have done. And uh, probably <clears throat> if you have any question, you can like, uh, I mean, probably text me and uh, we can discuss things. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for your kind attention. And hope to see you next week. So, Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.